What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys my full review of the Galaxy S7 Active. Now you guys know usually I don't mind talking a really long time about a phone in a full review, but because this is very similar to the regular Galaxy S7, which I already reviewed, I'm gonna try to keep this very short and just give you guys the bottom line, sort of the comparison. Should you get the S7, should you get the S7 Active? Uh, so I'll just stop, uh, start the video off by talking about what's very similar. That way you guys can check out my original review of the S7. If you're interested in any of those features, I'll drop it below. And then we'll get into the things that are a little bit new about this phone, what I like, what I dislike, etc. And then I'll hit you guys with the bottom line on who each of these phones is for. So first of all, um, what's about the same is the software. So we still got the same version of TouchWiz running on here. You've got Marshmallow. Uh, you got the game launcher, pretty much all the same stuff. You still got the option to go in here and check out themes. Uh, AT&T has this sort of weird uh, paginated system out of the box. I just used it the same as they, they got it out of the box. But you can add themes, of course. You guys have seen me use Material Black, Material Dark, etc. Same theme store. Essentially, the same software overall. And it's a much better version of TouchWiz, as I talked about in my S7 review. Uh, and nothing has really changed, so if you guys want to check out my thoughts on the software, again, you can check out the video below. Camera, pretty much the same camera as the S7, well, exactly the same camera as the S7 and the S7 Edge, and I didn't really notice any big differences. I took some pictures. This is my OnePlus 3 when I got it in the other day. Took some pictures of my sneakers. I shared these over on Instagram. You've got the same interface, so you still get the same quality. I think this is the best camera on the market right now. You've got... A pro mode here you've got all these different great features you've got a great low light capability um, pretty much everything you could want in a smartphone camera so again the same as the s7 if you guys are interested in my thoughts on the camera you can check out that video below as well uh, so that pretty much uh, ends where the similarities are exactly the same between the two phones um, in terms of overall hardware and software the things that are different, of course, are the body. You can see the body of the phone is much beefier as I gave the comparison here at the beginning of the video. I would say the S7 Active is almost twice as thick as the regular S7. You can see that, of course, on the back, it's no longer made all of glass because you want to get that drop protection. Uh, it's got a great sort of really large bumper around the edges that also gives you some drop protection. You do still have a fingerprint scanner on the front, which is nice. You do have physical buttons there at the bottom, as you can see. You don't have that on the regular S7, you just have your capacitive keys. I actually kind of like the physical buttons, it's just a change of pace, something new uh, that you don't get with other Samsung phones. Uh, so of course the body is a lot different, you still got a micro USB charging port on the bottom, no USB Type-C, you got the speaker there on the bottom as well. I did notice the speaker on this particular phone, uh, even though it's in the same location, you can see right here, it's in the same location as on the regular S7. I found the speaker to be a little bit more muffled and that could be because of maybe the way they've got the housing around the S7 Active here. I sort of compared them side by side. It's not quite as loud as the one on the S7, which already didn't sound good because this phone is also water resistant. Um, that's sort of the thing here at the end of the day. You are getting a little extra protection with the S7 Active, obviously on the drop protection side, but you already have water resistance when it comes to the regular S7. So this year you have to make the decision, is that drop resistance, uh, the drop protection really going to be helpful for you or not. Uh, you do have some extra protection from extreme temperatures and a little bit better water resistance rating on the S7 Active. Some people pointed that out in the comments as well. Um, but again, it's not as huge of a difference where in the past with the S6 series, you had no water resistance on the regular S7. Um, so otherwise, the next thing that's a little bit different aside from the body, which is obviously different to give you that rugged feature set that I just mentioned, is the screen. So you do have a plastic uh, layer to the screen on the top here, which gives you again some of that impact resistance, makes it uh, less likely to break the screen if you drop it. If you check out Jerry Rig Everything's channel, I'm sure you guys have seen it. Uh, he showed where it's a plastic layer. You can actually uh, sort of melt that plastic layer when you do a, if you burn, do a burn test or you drop something hot on the front. Uh, but I was kind of surprised. I thought because of the plastic layer, the dual layer, uh, that the AMOLED might not get as great colors, but I was really surprised. The colors on this phone are still pretty impressive overall. I was really impressed with that, uh, no, really no difference. You get the same outdoor visibility, the same overall quality of the display, the same very deep blacks, uh, like on the wallpaper that I'm rocking right now. 
And overall, it's just a great experience. So the display, even though it's slightly different than the one on the regular S7, it's actually just as good and gives you that added drop protection uh, by having that impact resistance. Of course, it is worth mentioning, again, if you do drop something hot on it, though, that plastic layer there can melt. Uh, the next thing, of course, that was a huge deal was the battery life on this particular phone. It has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And I was surprised to see that I didn't really get that much better battery life here. I just charged the phone up earlier, so we're not going to get a great representation. An hour and 28 minutes here, I've used the phone uh, on battery since last charging it, which I guess I got it up to about 85% earlier when I charged it. It does have decent standby time, but in terms of overall screen on time, I only got about five hours screen on time out of this, which isn't that great because I can already get about four hours screen on time with moderate to heavy use on my regular S7. So I was hoping to see something more around six hours, uh, maybe stretch this into two days of usage. I just didn't see that with the Galaxy S7 Active. So I would say that 4,000 milliamp hour battery that a lot of people were citing as a reason to possibly choose this over the regular S7, even if you didn't care about the rugged feature set, uh, I'm not sure that's really a reason to get the S7 Active. So at the end of the day, I wasn't that impressed with battery life. It was paired to my Android Wear, my Moto 360 the entire time. Also paired to my LG Tone Inf Infinims during the day, Bluetooth headset. Had it paired to some Bluetooth headphones, etc. Uh, so the same way I use all my other phones, I use this one. Really wasn't that impressed with the battery life. Uh, the one cool feature on here that is added in the software, which I guess is also added to the hardware, is this uh, active key here right there on the side. You can pretty much set that to do whatever you want. So the active key is right here at the bottom of the personal tab. You can see I set it up to do some things that are useful for me. Short press takes me to Hangouts, long press to Flamingo, which I'm using for Twitter, and the double press for Gmail. You can basically set it up to do any of that sort of stuff that you want. You can also set it to go into those apps even when the screen is locked. Uh, when you have the screen off, you just press that once take you right into the app that you want to use. There is a little bit of a delay, as you can see, takes me into Hangouts, double press, uh, it takes me into Gmail, and then if I long press it, it takes me into my Twitter app, which is Flamingo. This is mainly set to do sort of health keeping things like S Health, etc. but you can use it for whatever you want. I chose it to use it for these because the activity side of things is not really my primary purpose, um, but it is great for that as well if you're into that sort of thing. Overall, I really like the phone. I think that it's a good choice if you are a person who is into the active lifestyle. Uh, one thing I will note is that this bezel right here around the sides, around the front of the phone where you have the bumper and where it meets the screen, there is a gap there. And actually Phil Nickinson over at Android Central, he mentioned as well, you can easily get some dust caught in between the bumper and the screen. And even when I uh, put this in my pocket, I noticed substantial dust and dirt can get trapped in there. I think Phil from Android Central, he threw it into the sand uh, and it got all kinds of sand particles in there. So that's one of the thing to watch out for. Uh, not the biggest deal in the world, but if you're definitely someone who's prone to drop their phone more often or you do want to take the phone out with you, I did take this out in the Phoenix heat and sat it on my dash sometimes while I was driving around. The regular S7 and the S7 Edge, they will overheat and basically turn off all of the apps uh, and tell you to wait till the phone cools down. I've never had that happen with the S7 Active, so it is a little more resistant uh, to extreme temperatures. It's supposed to be resistant to extreme cold as well, which I can't really test here in Phoenix. Uh, so those are some pluses. Uh, in terms of the overall water resistance, uh, again, the S7 has some level of water resistance this year, so it wouldn't really benefit you to get the S7 Active if you're just worried about splashes or rain or taking it in the shower or the pool for a few minutes. There's really no compelling reason to get the S7 Active over the S7. Uh, because of the fact that the battery life wasn't that great, I'm inclined to say that unless you're really just super clumsy and you drop your phone all the time, there's really no reason to get this over the regular S7. Obviously, if you are clumsy or you're outdoors, you're going to drop your phone. The S7 Active is a much better choice. This phone's made of a complete glass, the regular S7. You're definitely going to crack it. Uh, if you guys saw on Twitter what happened to my friend's S7 Edge when he dropped it, it's just cracked everywhere. So if you're someone who's prone to drops or you're outdoors a lot, you take your phone everywhere with you and you're worried about dropping it, it's a good choice for that reason. But the battery life uh, and the overall water resistance, I don't think this year are compelling reasons because the regular S7 already get those features um, to a high level, great battery life, uh, and you already have that level of water resistance if you're just using it for casual everyday use. Overall, everything about the phone, otherwise very good. Software the same, camera still excellent. 
I like the active key a lot. That's an added nice feature, but not really a reason to buy the phone, especially when this S7 Active retails for about the same price as an S7 Edge. So hopefully I gave you guys some idea of how to make up your mind. Again, the S7 Active also a much bigger phone, so you gain some girth while getting that protection and you get a little bit more battery life. All right guys, so that's my full review of the Galaxy S7 Active. Thanks again to AT&T, Mobilize Phoenix for sending out this unit for me to review. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Also find me over on Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus, the links in the description, and Dope Tech Daily. I appreciate you guys checking out this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.